today. I'm taking this cruise ship for the next two weeks from Tokyo all the way over to Singapore. I'll show you exactly what it's like to live on board this luxury vessel, from my huge first class suite to the fine dining and opulent facilities on our 4,000 mile journey. All this doesn't come cheap though, with prices north at $20,000, but I'm taking you along for the ride. With that, let's pick up our story in Tokyo, Japan. Konnichiwa, we're on our way to the cruise terminal, about 40 minutes drive from downtown Tokyo. Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. Well, we're about to get on board this, the Celebrity Millennium, which will be our home for the next two weeks. So without any more to say, let's go and get on board. Opened in 2002, the Yokohama International Passenger Terminal is frankly a work of art in itself. It's quite the operation too, and will be just one of the 140 ships which call here each year. We're warmly greeted and our baggage is wheeled over to the drop-off counter. This will be delivered in due course to our room. As we're sweet guests, a retreat representative comes to greet us and lead us over to the expedited check-in. Ordinarily, you'd need to complete formalities here with the majority of passengers. Retreat guests are processed much faster in a cordoned off area, complete with refreshments and with no queue at all. Requirements are of course my passport, cruise tickets and a credit card to leave on file for any incidentals. This is all completed in just a matter of minutes and we're invited to head through security at our leisure. Again, no queue and we're led by the retreat concierge team directly onto Celebrity Millennium. But just how big is our ship today? She clocks in at 965 foot, which is roughly the length of four Boeing 747s, but it's positively tiny compared to the brand new Icon of the Seas. Time to get on board then. First up, I need to swipe my card in order to physically check into the ship. This brings us out into the Grand Foyer, which is the central hub of the ship. Here you can book shore excursions or speak to guest services. We're currently here on deck 3, but we need to travel up to deck 6 for our suite. Let's waste no time and take the port side glass elevators up to our new home. I always find it so exciting when you get on board a new ship for the first time, though admittedly the main part is trying not to get lost. Our room 6138 is located on the starboard side of the vessel. Welcome to our new home. And of course, welcome back to the channel, Mum. Oh, hi. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mum, you've hurt your ankle, haven't you? Yeah, I've broken it. Oh, so dear. I have my boot and my stick. So we'll make sure we look after Mum this trip. They've got a special assistance coming. We're going to have a wheelchair to help you get around the ship as well. Yeah, it's going to be um, fun. Build your muscles up. <laughs> it's one of those things it happens. Yeah. But welcome back. It's lovely to have you back on the channel and on another cruise. Yes, I'm very excited. Let's take a proper look around our royal suite then. This is the second best room on board at a palatial near 800 square foot of space. Starting off in the dining room with space for four. And what's this? A welcome bottle of champagne, of course. Note also the complimentary Evian water, along with our personalized gin selection. Moving onwards, the living room, complete with a sofa bed, comfy chairs, and a huge flat screen TV. This is also where you'll find the telephone with a direct line to our butler, available for any room service or cocktail making requests. Now we do have a large balcony, which even features a hot tub, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. Onwards we get to the primary bedroom. I did originally request twins, so this will be sorted once we go to dinner. The suite also comes with a small but practical wardrobe space, which should just about fit all my NASA sweatshirts in. Lastly, the contemporary bathroom, featuring double sinks, a toilet of course, jacuzzi tub and shower. I'm also happy to see the premium amenities provided here for your use on board. It's finally time for our departure. It's amazing to see the local turnout for our sail away, which has drawn scores of people waving us off from the cruise terminal. As we cruise under the Yokohama Bay Bridge, shall we take a look at our itinerary for the next couple of weeks? 
we'll continue southwest for the next 2,000 miles, all the way to Hong Kong, where we'll take on supplies and have time to explore. Then we'll continue south for another 2,000 miles, all the way to Singapore. In total, we'll cover an epic 4,000 miles, and I can't wait to take you along. Well, we're very much on our way, and that's apparent by quite a lot of movement, actually. Now, most importantly, it's time to get changed for our first meal on board, and that's going to mean something a little bit more formal than what I've currently got on. But don't worry, I've come prepared. So where exactly are we heading? Well, sweet guests have access to a special restaurant down on deck four, there we go. Usefully, this is a speedy elevator ride down and not at the other end of the ship. This is Lumine, seating just 92 passengers out of the ship's two and a half thousand on board, so it's pretty exclusive. Oh, and to note, yes, this is entirely included in our sailing, no sneaky extra charges so far. In terms of the menu, this does vary each night, with a signature section of the menu remaining the same throughout the cruise. There's also an extensive wine list with a couple of standouts from the Champagne region. I had to treat mum, as it's our first night, and of course we have bingo cards to complete. Plus it eats nicely into our $1,000 cruise credit, which I got for booking this trip early. We're offered a selection of fresh bread as our appetizer is brought out. Mum goes for the baby spinach salad, whilst I opt for the pork medallions. Now for our mains. Mum's gone for the oven-baked cannelloni, and I've selected the braised lamb shank with garlic potato puree. To conclude our wonderful dinner, let's give dessert a try. Mum goes for the passion fruit souffle, and I just have to have the milk chocolate brownies. Wow. Welcome back to the suite. Yeah, we've had a lovely first meal on board. How was it, Mum? It was really good, actually. Yeah. Uh, it was a little bit bumpy. The. Uh, I hope this yeah. isn't going to be another repeat of Silver <laughs> yeah. Sea. Yeah, I did take my travel sick tablet. <laughs> it's an important Just in thing. Case. But you're excited the next couple yeah, of weeks at sea, really right? Really fun, really fun. With that, I think it's time to get some sleep. So uh, let's do just that, because I'm pretty tired. I'm shattered, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> During our absence at dinner, our room attendant has fixed our beds into the twin setup and placed some customised monogram pyjamas for each of us. Good morning, I slept wonderfully, and now I make it time for a hot drink to wake up. Usefully as a Brit, kettles are provided in your suite, although a coffee machine is not unfortunately. So I'll have to make do with a green tea to begin with this morning. There is something most refreshing, heading straight outside to the sea air first thing. Let's take a look at the Royal Suite balcony then, consisting of two sun lounges, a seating area with coffee table, and the star of the show, a hot tub. Though it has to be said, the latter has seen better days, which is disappointing at this price point. I make it breakfast time. This is served across multiple venues, including the main dining room, main buffet, and even the spa. But my preference is familiar territory, the suite only Lumine restaurant. It's what Coastal Kitchen should be on the Royal Caribbean ships. Quiet, high quality, with attentive personalised service. From day one at Lumini, the staff addressed us by name and knew our preferences by heart, which is closer to what I'd expect on an ultra-luxury line like Silver Sea or Regent. So what's on the menu then? As we wait for our order, we're presented with a fantastic pastry selection. 
this cruise is going to require some restraint, I feel. Mum and I both go for the Mexican breakfast, which is delicious. With breakfast out of the way and appropriately caffeinated, I think it's time for a proper look around our ship. And just before we go off and explore, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor. I recently found out I was being charged every month for an additional Netflix subscription. Well, today's video sponsor, Rocket Money, is here to help. Rocket Money is the personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. I'm using Rocket Money to cancel unwanted subscriptions. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels these unwanted subscriptions for you. You can even cancel from within the app in just a couple of taps. So there's no need to worry about those customer service calls. I'm also using Rocket Money to set up smart savings for that dream world cruise. You can choose the amount and the frequency and Rocket Money will automatically deposit savings into a smart savings account. You can withdraw any time. Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in cancelled subscriptions. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash trektrendy or click the link in the description to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium that's rocketmoney.com slash track trendy to get started for free the Celebrity Millennium was only recently refurbished completely but it's in fact been sailing for almost 25 years now let's start our tour up on deck 11 when it's a bit warmer they'll set out the deck chairs and sun loungers up here Thankfully, throughout the sailing, we never struggled to get a spot, but that's also down to a sweet perk, which I'll show you shortly. Here we get a great view of Deck 10, where the ship's main pools are, the four hot tubs, and of course, the solarium. They also run various activities out here throughout the day, such as dance classes. As we work our way around Deck 11, we arrive at one of the outside bars. It's worth mentioning at this point that Royal Suite guests have a premium drinks package included. This means I can enjoy pretty much any drink off the menu, up to the value of $17 each. Now we've actually discovered there's a Deck 12. Well, kind of. It doesn't run for the entire ship, and it appears to include an outside movie theater and sports facilities. Accessibility-wise, there's a chairlift for Mum, but we'll need to contact guest services for someone to come and assist. Thankfully, it's all but a three-minute wait, and Mum is gliding upwards to Deck 12 before we know it. First up, we have the multi-use sports court then more relaxation areas, and finally the outside movie theatre. I'm not sure about you, but I make it lunchtime. Let's head down to Deck 5, via our room of course, as I'll pop something a little smarter on. We're booked into Sushi on 5, a speciality restaurant, but whilst we wait for our table, let's check out the ship's main dining room, called the Metropolitan. It's beautifully remodelled, with a contemporary design split over two floors. The space is well managed too, and can accommodate up to 1,170 passengers at any one time. In terms of the menu, this varies each night, but let's take a look at tonight's. There's also a decent selection of wines, all of which are included in our drinks package. All this food is making me hungry, so let's hot foot it over to Sushi on 5. The restaurant seats around 50 for lunch or dinner, and it seems quite popular with large groups today. Let's settle in by the window and take a look at the menu. The menu isn't huge, but there is a good selection of sushi, with some hot dishes thrown in as well. Naturally, I'll have to crack open an ice-cold DC for, well, the bingo card, of course. To start, we both go for the miso soup and the edamame beans, which go down an absolute treat. For main, mum goes for the vegetable yamagobo, along with a vegetable tempura. Whilst I go for the spicy tuna and shrimp tempura rolls. Oh, and did I mention, as this is a speciality restaurant, it's at an additional cost. But as we're Royal sweet guests, we get unlimited speciality dining. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm really excited because it's time to go and have a look behind the scenes. This is something that a lot of cruisers offer, usually at a supplementary cost. I'm gonna go and meet over on deck 11 to go and see what it's like behind the scenes of this cruise ship. Ah uh, yes, the cost. Well, this was of course supplementary at $99 per person. The meeting point is at the Sky Lounge, where about 10 people are waiting for the tour. We're each offered a lanyard and an earpiece for the occasion. To begin with, we need to head down two flights of stairs to Deck 9, where we're granted access to the bridge. We're greeted by the captain, who warmly welcomes us and introduces us to his team. We're talked through the next few days of our itinerary and given a chance to take photos. Doing this tour is the only way you can gain access to the bridge, so if you're interested to see the brain of this cruise ship operation, this is well worth it. Now to head lower still, down to deck 4 and the kitchens. Here we're introduced to the head chef, who's in charge of delivering over 10,000 meals a day on board. Quite the feat if you ask me. Next up we'll stroll down the famous I-95, or at least that's what it's nicknamed. It's a centrally located passageway which passes down the whole ship, connecting various parts of this intricate operation. None more so than the engine control room. You may think we're done, but there's one last stop, at the very bottom of the ship on deck zero. This is the laundry, something we've definitely been making use of. During my absence, I treated mum to a massage, so let's go and collect her from the spa. This is located on deck 10. As you enter the spa complex, firstly you're met with the salon, offering anything from an express blowout to full colouring and cuts. Prices are, well, pretty high, but nothing compared to the likes of the ultra-luxury lines. The spa itself is decent, though not huge. There are multiple treatment rooms, along with the Persian gardens featuring a steam room and sauna. It's pricey, but in line with the industry norm. It's also a great place to further whittle down that onboard credit. Lastly, nestled in the corner of the facility is the gym, which is impressive, offering stunning views out over the ship's bow. Meanwhile, it's turned into a beautiful afternoon in the South China Sea. So let's head up to the retreat sun deck, 12 floors up. Here we unfortunately run into quite an issue. The only way up is via the stairs, as both elevators are broken and by the looks of it have been so for quite some time. With mum's current limited mobility, I'm able to help her up the stairs very slowly, but to many this would not be an option. I did raise this with the onboard team and was offered $2,000 in future cruise credit for the inconvenience. The team on board did the best they could, but Celebrity HQ really need to get on top of this for other guests. The retreat sun deck itself is a vast private space, available only to suite guests. It's an entire separate complex, which is actually pretty quiet and you'll never have to hunt for the perfect sunbed. What's more, there's a hot tub and these fantastic cabanas for your use during your stay up here. So you see, not being able to access this due to the broken elevators is a massive drawback. Let's join mum in the Alfresco lounge. Do note you can actually eat lunch up here, all inclusive of course. Drinks in hand, it's time to sit back, relax and enjoy this gorgeous nautical sunset. It's that time again, dinner of course. It's time to make our way to pre-dinner drinks. We'll be trying out one of the many bars and a personal favorite, the Martini Bar on deck four. Let's settle in and take a look at the menu then. Good to see all the options fall bang on the $17 mark, so no additional charge. As we place our order, the nightly live music from the main foyer begins. We don't have all too long to wait for our cocktails. I've ordered the cucumber martini, whilst mum has gone for the lychee martini. Both get rave reviews in our books.
Now we must journey down to Deck 3, as we have a reservation at the Tuscan Grill. This is the ship's Italian speciality restaurant. Being totally transparent, the restaurant feels quite dated compared to the modern facilities throughout the rest of the ship. Though I do love being able to see right into the kitchens, always the sign of a good restaurant, nothing to hide. We're shown over to a seat by the window and presented with our menus. This does look right up my street, from steaks, pasta and pizza. As we place our order, our waiter chops fresh oregano, which is married with some extra virgin olive oil, the match made in heaven for our recently furnished bread basket. To start, I indulge in the crispy calamari. Mumford goes a starter in favour of just a main this evening. So what has she gone for? Well, being vegetarian, the chef has made an off-menu special, spaghetti arrabbiata. In contrast, I of course had to go for the dry-aged NY steak. This comes with mashed potato and garlic broccolini, and it's absolutely fantastic. What a lovely meal, but as for now, it's bedtime. Hong Kong is beckoning. Good morning from Hong Kong, it's a beautiful day here, so let's waste no time and head out to explore. I often get asked how stopping over in ports work with regards to your passport and immigration formalities. And in truth, on the most part, all you need is your cruise card. Our passport is currently with the retreat staff, who manage all this process on our behalf. It makes travel a lot easier, that's for sure. We've decided against a cruise excursion today, and instead for an Uber, which will take us the 20 minutes over to the promenade. Well, we're very happy to welcome you properly to Hong Kong. That was an adventure getting over here, wasn't it, Mum? Yeah, it was quite <laughs> difficult. <laughs> quite busy to push a wheelchair, that's going to yeah. be sad. We're going to now go on the Star Ferry. Are you excited? I am very excited. So we've come off one ship and straight on to another, but this is certainly a tad different, and perhaps one of the most iconic short sailings in the world. So another taxi later, we find ourselves in Hong Kong Park, where I found a traditional dim sum tea house, specialising in vegetarian fare. This was perfect for mum, and whilst we won't be ticking off any bingo items, it's absolutely delicious. Now we really must head back to the cruise terminal for our departure. Thankfully, the boarding process is fairly seamless, and after a brief security check, we're met by one of the lovely celebrity crew members, who insists on helping us back on board. After watching the famous Symphony of Lights, which is a daily light and sound show across Victoria Harbour, we're all ready to set sail into the night. Our next leg, as you're already familiar, will take us some 2,000 nautical miles over to Singapore. It's time for evening drinks, and in a new venue tonight. We'll need to head up to Deck 11 to the Sky Lounge. I'm unsure where everyone is, perhaps Hong Kong tied them all out, but it's completely quiet in here. Not to worry, Mum and I will get the party started. Let's take a look at the menu then. Mm. 
Well, that is lovely, isn't Delicious. it? Delicious. I have yeah. to say, the idea of having a cocktail after your star sign is fantastic. I cheated. You I had the wrong cheat. one. Hey, Mum, give the game away. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> now is the perfect time to quickly talk about your experience so far. How have you enjoyed it? It's been very relaxing. It's yeah. been really nice. Bit of a challenge to get around. Just a tiny bit, my, hasn't it? Foot. Yeah. Um, I mean, the wheelchair has been great, actually. It and has. You've, you've been amazing. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> I can't about. say I'm particularly. we may have indulged in a couple of those cocktails. Now it's time for dinner, tonight in the restaurant Cuisine. Do you see what they did there? This is another inclusive speciality restaurant and one which is meant to be an interactive experience. The menu features two options for each course, though I should have read it a little closer, as we'll find out. We actually have some champagne left, would you believe, from the other night. So let's indulge in another glass of this lovely 2012 Dom and settle into the show. So the concept is pretty cool. You sit back and a video of a tiny chef is projected onto your plate, making your meal. This starter is of course the burrata salad. Next is where I go a little off piste. Now what was projected was a shellfish and tomato soup. But what I ended up ordering was the chicken breast with mashed potatoes, a rogue order. Things take an even stranger twist when steak is offered on the menu and I just couldn't help myself with the roasted lobster tail with caviar. What can I say, I just had to complete the bingo card. Normal service resumes for dessert, not fancying the alternative rice pudding and instead the vanilla ice cream sundae. Which brings us to a fitting end of quite an eccentric meal. A cool experience though, and I'd for sure recommend it. Good morning. So it's dawned on me that we haven't checked out the other Royal Suite benefit that we have at our disposal. The Retreat Lounge of course, which is located on deck 4, along the port side of the vessel towards the bow. It's kind of like a first-class lounge with full concierge service from the amazing team here. Oh, and did I mention a help yourself buffet? Ideal for if you don't fancy eating a full meal in the Lumine restaurant or if you'd like a snack throughout the day. The highlight for me though is the coffee. It's something I find so many cruise ships do so poorly. Here however, a freshly ground coffee machine takes care of my much needed caffeine hit. On our way to the elevator, we very nearly get sucked into an art auction. I find it particularly random, this seemed to be running most days on board. But hey, it's very popular, though that may have been down to the complimentary champagne. Right, I digress, we're actually on our way to check out the shopping facilities. As with most cruise ships, Celebrity Millennium has its fair share. Located on deck 5, you can choose from duty-free perfume, a new Mont Blanc pen, or maybe even a pre-owned Rolex. For me though, I'll be bringing back a teddy for my nephew. I make it time for lunch and for something new. Let's head up to deck 10, and with it the Ocean View Cafe, or well, the main buffet. Now it's no secret I'm not a fan of cruise ship buffets, but Celebrity seem to have done it right here. Somehow they've made it feel less like a hectic free-for-all and instead a more relaxed affair. Choose from freshly made pizza, beef wellington, fish and chips, or one of my favourites, Mexican. So what have we gone for? Mum has a selection of salad, guacamole, chips and pita, whereas I of course have gone for the fajitas. To close off, let's check out dessert. Well, there's a ton of options available, but I think I'll save myself for afternoon tea. Oh, go on then, some ice cream. Right, let's talk about the elephant in the room. How much did this all cost? So for a two week cruise in the second best room on board, it was never gonna be cheap, but booking join a sale last January, along with the onboard credit of $1,000, this cruise came in at $24,256.
Anyway, to keep tradition up, I think it's that time of the trip where we need to have an afternoon tea. What do Good you say? Good idea. Sounds nice. Yeah? What do you fancy? Uh, what about an espresso martini? <laughs> that really is a tradition <laughs> off of our last video on Silver Sea. It was nice, oh, wasn't it? Let me put the order in right now with our butler and we shall have some espresso martini yes, afternoon please. tea. <laughs> Check it out, Mum. Look yum. at this. <laughs> Delicious. Mm. Oh, yum, yum. A lovely, lovely day. Now, most importantly, without me spilling it, I've come this far. Oh, well, there we go, Mum. Another fantastic cruise. Still a little bit yeah. of time to go, but no, um, it's wonderful. Can you really beat this? No, it's lovely, <laughs> isn't it? How delightful. Cheers again. Cheers. <laughs> It's that time again, dinner at Lumine for a change. I wonder what delights we have in store off the menu this evening. Like clockwork, once our order is placed, we're offered some delicious warmed bread. And before long, our appetizer is served. Mum has gone for the smoked tomato soup, whilst I've yet again chosen the burrata. Can you tell I like it? For main, Mum chooses the slow roasted radicchio and I the bucatini with spicy sausage. To close off this indulgence, I go for the chocolate ganache tart with espresso chocolate and mandarin marmalade. Now for an after dinner show in the theatre. Located across decks three, four and five, the theatre hosts nightly performances from breathtaking acrobatics to Broadway and West End style musicals. And just like that, we've arrived into Singapore. I'm told we docked around 4am, which is way too early for me. Mind you, there's something pretty special, opening your balcony door, and just like that, you're in another country. Welcome to Singapore. Welcome. We've just checked in to the lovely Mandarin Oriental after perhaps one of our favourite cruises, I think. It was lovely. Really Wasn't enjoyed it amazing? It. Yeah. What was your highlight, Mum? Um, Hong Kong, I think. Oh, I yeah. loved Hong Kong. Yeah. It was just an incredible place and somewhere we definitely need to return. Yeah, I feel it was just touching sort of the surface of it. I yeah, to that's that the thing about a cruise, yeah. though, is you see just a small element of it, it's enough to go back and explore. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you all again next time. Mm -hmm.